Hello everyone and welcome back to our nine month ultimate world cruise adventure and today is day 162 and we're in France. Wait a minute, <laughs> we're in Africa. France. Africa, welcome to Living <laughs> Phase 2. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that full life aboard Royal Caribbean's nine-month ultimate world cruise on Serenade of the Sea. We sure are. And friends, today we're in Africa. France. <laughs> well, we're both right. We, we are. <laughs> Why don't you explain, Mike? So today we're on Reunion Island, and I'm not even going to try my French pronunciations, Reunion, <laughs> you know, because I'll get them completely wrong. But uh, we would say Reunion Island. Reunion Union Island actually is a department of France and a department is kind, it's not exactly a state like in the United States. Our guide described it more like a county, but it is an official part of France. It's not just a territory or a, a protectorate or something like that. It's an official part of France, just but, like if you were on the mainland of France. Yeah, but it's... Yeah. In Africa. Right. It's on the continent of Africa. Right. So it is off the coast of Madagascar, off uh, the west side of Africa, out in the Indian Ocean. And to be honest, I never really thought about Reunion Island too much. It's not like, oh, that's on my bucket list to go to, but it is part of our Africa leg as we're swinging around. And to be honest, it should have been on my bucket list. It really should. This was, it's beautiful, friends. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. This mm -hmm. has been one of the most beautiful islands we've gone to. Right. It's like going to France, but yet you're on a tropical island. It's the it's kind of this best of both worlds. And so we look forward to really sharing with that with you today. Well, we had a nice sailing coming into Reunion Island. We did. It was it was really mm -hmm. nice to to watch all the the mountains and the mm -hmm. hills here. Mm -hmm. And we could even begin to start seeing a few of the waterfalls. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we're going to see on our trip here. Yeah, quite a bit. And we have a private tour today. Mm -hmm. We had a friend hire a private guide. Yeah, it was through tours mm -hmm. by local. And there were six of us. Mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. and so the first his name was Gary Gustein was mm -hmm. the name of our tour guide so if mm -hmm. you wanted to look up a great tour guide this mm -hmm. would be and we'll put a link uh, we'll put mm -hmm. a link to him down in the description absolutely excellent a perfect English and one of the friendliest guides we've had I mean yes. just really wonderful great vehicle very comfortable yeah. it was you know everything was really uh, uh, he was checking all the boxes right away no red flags he certainly really very friendly yes mm -hmm. so what one of the places he was actually taking us to the little town of Helberg and as we were getting there though we passed by so many waterfalls mm -hmm. that were absolutely spectacular mm -hmm. one was an incredibly tall waterfall I don't think it's the mm -hmm. tallest in the mm -hmm. world no, but it no. certainly se it yeah. seemed really high mm -hmm. and, and a whole series of cascading yeah, waterfalls so and, yeah. many. and some mm -hmm. of the, the cascades there were so many of them uh, they called one area the bride's veil mm -hmm. because there were just so many waterfalls coming down that mm -hmm. that was their name for oh, it. Oh, it was very beautiful. And we even uh, stopped there to take pictures of that Bridesvale mm -hmm. area. And as we did, there's a waterfall that comes over the mountain and actually falls on the road. So I got some pictures of that too. And as you're driving along, all of a sudden you hear this big bang on top of your car as the water's hitting it as you drive under it on the road. Uh, yeah, we just went and, and took in the waterfalls and it was just beautiful and, there. Yeah, we, we probably we were going to say that too many times because mm -hmm. of, it was absolutely stunning. Well, one of the reasons it is so beautiful is this is a volcanic island, uh -huh. very similar in formation to the Hawaiian islands. So the, uh, the the chain of the Hawaiian Islands is how Reunion Island was formed as well. And that's what you're seeing in some of this beauty, the big, tall uh, crags and, and rock formations and peaks that have all the waterfalls coming out of them. Again, very similar to the Hawaiian Islands, but with a French touch in Africa. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know? So, well, as we're driving past those waterfalls, as Nancy mentioned, we went to the old village of Helborg, which is actually a UNESCO listed site. It's one of considered one of the most beautiful mountain villages in the world, and it it was really good. It's, it it's actually good. kind of in the caldera of a mm -hmm. volcano, but it's it's mm -hmm. just charming. It just it just oozes with charm mm -hmm. all over. It's not a large village mm -hmm. by any means. There's kind of a little main street that has mm -hmm. a bakery 
bakery and a grocery store and a mm-hmm. couple They've souvenir shops. Obligatory souvenir yeah, shops. A few yeah. couple restaurants mm-hmm. there as well. But not but not overly touristy, I wouldn't say. No, so. I wouldn't say so mm-hmm. either. Yeah. But when we arrived there, our, our guide kind of showed us around, kind of gave us the overview of town. And then he walked uh, us and one other couple to a Creole house mm-hmm. that belonged to a lady. A lady was 97 years old and she was sitting out front and she doesn't necessarily give tours of her house. It, it is her house and mm-hmm. I think her children also live there. They do have some areas, some rooms that were kind of blocked off mm-hmm. that we weren't to go into, but we got to see a, a bedroom and living area and a kitchen and mm-hmm. it was just it was it was just really nice to see. We got to see the inside indoor kitchen, but then as they did in days past mm-hmm. they had an outdoor kitchen right most of the kitchens would have been outdoor for fire protection right. heat etc and yeah it was really nice like you said she didn't give a tour she just it, it just kind of opened her house and uh-huh. it was i think the what would we pay five euros i think or something yeah. to go in there uh, it wasn't maybe it was seven euros but it wasn't very much and you just got to wander around i love the grounds and how traditional the grounds were and as our guide said it seems a, a hodgepodge just kind of mixed up but it actually does have a um a plan to it let's put it that way you know what Mm -hmm. and it actually reminded me a little bit of my grandmother's house so yeah it it brought it Uh did it brought back some memories Mm -hmm. looking at some of the furniture that she had Mm -hmm. some of the paintings Mm -hmm. on the walls now she had out and back what we first thought was a dog house Mm -hmm. but it it wasn't a dog house it was a turtle house (laughs) for a tortoise yeah yeah so she had pet tortoise back there Mm -hmm. yeah and then beyond that we also got another pet up front that was hanging from the trees that you loved oh no (laughs) it's a big old spider (laughs) no i didn't love that but like they said spiders are good because they eat mosquitoes they take care of bugs and so it was just it was hanging out just doing its thing it wasn't bothering you and their her garden was beautiful Mm -hmm. it was just there was just so much there to look and Mm -hmm. see and the flowers were blooming and Mm -hmm. just just really charming yeah it was and and the nice thing is our guide pointed out the different reasons for the little gazebo out front you know that's where they would sit and talk and Mm -hmm. be outside so when they weren't in the heat of the house but then they'd watch people go by and they could be far enough away from the road they could talk about people and if they didn't want to interact with them they didn't have to and if they wanted to they could call them in so little things like that it was it was interesting to see how those houses were built yes so, well, after we left the Creole house, we went back up to the main street. We met some of our friends. We actually sat and had a little French croissant. It was from Chocolate the French bank. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. <laughs> yep. And then we walked down the street to see another beautiful overview that you could see from the end. But we got a nice, interesting story about the statue at the end of the street. We did. The statue of a, of a naked woman <laughs> has a lot of history to it. Mm-hmm. It was originally erected in front of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And the priest did not like it. Mm-hmm. So he blew the statue up. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which, by the way, the statue was there to commemorate... Um, the people who sacrificed in World, World War I. One, mm-hmm. and that so that it was it's supposed to be victory of France, and it you know the the naked yes. lady holding the shield is a traditional symbol in France of victory, yes. and that was what it was for was from World War One. But yeah, he didn't like that. No, and, the priest was yeah. not very happy, but mm-hmm. they they rescued the statue, they put it back together and reassembled it, and uh, then had, they had had put it back up, but a flood came in a different place in they a put, different yeah. in a different place a mm-hmm. flood. came came and it then buried the statue and Mm -hmm. the statue was buried for about 20 years Yeah, some decades and it was just there and people forgot about it they (laughs) They were so worried about rebuilding the town after this massive mudslides and flood that they just left the statue and then they were doing some construction and they hit this thing in the ground found the statue and they go oh there's that statue (laughs) statue has nine lives so it's now in kind of a little garden area Mm -hmm. in front of one of their city buildings there but Mm -hmm. that's kind of fun story it is and it's quite a beautiful statue too so but that's helborg and not a lot to it it's really one of those towns you just want to sit have a coffee Mm -hmm. uh, look at the caldera that it's sitting in and this amazing beauty and watch the clouds go over the mountains i mean that's really what helborg is all about so so then it was time for us to leave Helberg, and we drove next to a city lake, or I guess just mm-hmm. a lake outside of mm-hmm. town. And it, again, the beauty could not 
be described mm-hmm. here. There were this was Pentecost, and so it's a holiday, and there were families that were out there that were celebrating, having picnics, doing some camping, mm-hmm. and just just enjoying the beauty. And so we took a few pictures mm-hmm. there. It was about a five minute. Five to ten walk, minute walk, hike. I don't know what you yeah. want to call it. Uh, from the parking lot up to mm-hmm. where that lake was, and oh, it was very beautiful. It really was. So, mm-hmm. well, then we got back in the car and uh, we drove back by the waterfalls that we had originally seen, and now it was beautiful because it was under a different uh, kind of light. So mm-hmm. things looked a little different. Even can... even different amounts of water coming yeah. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from these waterfalls, then he takes a turn into what looks like. I don't know, just a field of because sugar of sugarcane. Because mm-hmm. it sugar cane grow on growing on both sides of the car, mm-hmm. but it was actually a street, and he was taking us to another waterfall. Mm-hmm. And this one was really big. It was it, huge. It was big and mm-hmm. just again just beautiful. And that I know, like I said, we've said that so many times in this uh, video, but mm-hmm. that's really what Reunion Island is is for its beauty. Yeah, and in fact, the waterfall you're seeing here. If you look, we have kind of a a single stream coming down, but you look and there's a rock face and he actually showed us some pictures of a time when they had a lot of rain and that entire rock face was waterfall. And in fact, it pushed so much dirt and debris down that the gravel you see us standing on wasn't there. It was flat and all that gravel came down that river and piled up there in front of that waterfall here in some recent mm-hmm. flooding. So yeah, it, it, it things can be very spectacular here. Okay. And this is one of those, I guess you might say pro tip, in a lot of the countries and areas we've gone to, and I, it seems even more specifically here in Africa, you want to watch the seasons. So we're getting into fall now because we are in the southern hemisphere now we've we've crossed the equator and we're heading down uh, through uh, southern Africa so we're going from summer up north now or spring really because it's it's May Mm -hmm. to swinging down around here and it's going to be June July August which we would think of as summer in the north well now it's it's, approaching winter it's approaching winter so you want to watch the weather really carefully and find out when the proper seasons are to go Mm -hmm. to any of these locations because we are actually out of season and the, the reason we're here is because our ship, as everyone knows, was diverted. We weren't mm-hmm. supposed to be here. In fact, they thought the last cruise ship was going to be several weeks ago. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, Serenade's coming in. <laughs> so they had to fire up all the tourist stuff and the guides and everything and, and prepare. And they got one more ship for the season. But we're going to be the last one now for their winter. Right. So you right. want to look at that because the weather can be bad. But we've been very blessed with the weather. We have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, after the last big waterfall. Right. It was really almost to the end of our tour. We had a little bit of time left. And so we asked the tour guide if he'd just take us to a grocery store. We like to poke around in grocery stores and see what local foods are like. And Mm -hmm. we didn't purchase anything, Mm -hmm. but it was fun to to look around in the grocery store. Yeah. Being a French island, I was actually looking for some real foie gras, which (laughs) I couldn't find. (laughs) So I found other, they had type of foie gras that were not the the goose liver pate mm-hmm. they had other pates um that were um different ones but not the goose liver so yeah. i kind of struck out there and yeah. then we headed back to the ship we did we headed back to the ship that and the weather was changing so as we were heading back to the ship the weather was turning bad there had been a cyclone up um Near Madagascar, Madagascar, Mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons we missed going to Madagascar. And it Mm -hmm. was affecting the weather uh, in Reunion Island Mm -hmm. at this point. And so we we got back on the ship and the ship pulled away and the ship's getting very, very rocky, Mm -hmm. very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, They had they had canceled the original headline show and then this was funny because they they replaced that headline well show. And that was a musical headline show with the the onboard singers and the and the performers right 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 but they couldn't do that one so they replaced it with a juggling with a juggler and i'm like how is this juggler we can hardly stand up straight how mm-hmm. is this juggler gonna juggle mm-hmm. on on the stage of the yeah, well, the ship's ship. going up and down and, and sideways and, and left and right, and you for, know, the, yeah. for the most part, he did. Pretty he did really good. good. He did really he, good. He actually, he even yeah. juggled swords and axes, and those he did not drop. He dropped yeah. a few things, yeah. but not those. Yeah, that was crazy. So, that was yeah. crazy, but it was pretty good. Well, then the next day was a sea day. Right, we had two sea days mm-hmm. then, so we spent, as as usual, some time with editing videos and preparing mm-hmm. uh, the YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. They had one day that was called Africa Day. 
Mm -hmm. And so Royal Caribbean will um, occasionally do special days uh, that kind of commemorate the areas of of the world Mm -hmm. that we're in. So they had things like creating a little African mask. Mm -hmm. They were teaching an African dance that Mm -hmm. you could do uh, later in the evening. Mm -hmm. And so things like that just just to celebrate being in Africa. Right, because the next day uh, that that we're our next non-sea day, our next port day is Port Elizabeth. So now we're actually I guess what I'd say on Africa proper, you the, know, the, main the mainland continent. Africa yes. in South Africa, Port Elizabeth. And there we're going to get to go on our very first, I hesitate to call it a safari game drive. Some people would say safari, some people would say game drive, where we're going to see some unbelievable wildlife. We are so friends. Be sure to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Mm -hmm. We appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you so much for watching and Mm -hmm. we will see you soon. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye Take care. Bye-bye.